I say about these auto dim helmets is I can put my helmet down before we even start. So, Jared, just let me know when you're ready and I'll have a run of well here. So we are back stepping into the piece doing a little circle. That's one way that you can do it. That's the way we'll do the world. So how to do the way of see. Um, there's no really right or wrong way. Really as long as you need to get the proper communication. Um, and then you're sure not having any holes as well with the back of the um, If you'd like to, we can go right into it. Go down below here. You just let me know when you're ready, and I'm gonna kind of do these letter C's here. Okay, I'm just doing a little bit more. I'm just kind of. So it's back and forth, get them away with you. Situation. I was going really slow and kind of uh, whipping the torch back and forth, kind of exaggerating it, just so everybody could see it on camera how you know, the, the movement basically. That doesn't mean that you're going to have to weave that far back and forth. Um, you can do much smaller ones if you need to, but you may move to, need to move a lot quicker than I am if you're trying to weld something that's um, you know maybe it's a little thinner or you're, um, if you're afraid of burning through, you may not want to do that. So what we're going to show you now is a couple of different sounds and what it looks like when you have the welder set up incorrectly. And then we'll, uh, we'll show you, how to, you know, obviously how to correct it. But I'm going to show you guys what it sounds and looks like that you're probably going to run into when you're first learning how to weld. So the first one that you run into, um, and I got my settings. I already set them up so I know how to incorrectly set the machine up. Um, is if you have, if you're hearing sputtering, so if you're trying to weld and the wire is almost bouncing off of the workpiece, um, you can feel it almost pushing back and it's sputtering. Um, there could be a couple things that cause, cause that. So I'm going to do one with the, uh, with the wire speed turned up too quickly, um, either too quick or have my heat too low. It could cause either thing. Again, you want to mix everything together to do uh, you know, the optimum setup. So we're going to get rid of our little... Little ball on the end here. All right. So you let me know when you're ready, Joe. Not sound nearly as good as the uh, the ones before. We didn't get that frying bacon sound. Um, what's the result of doing something like this? It's uh, probably going to look like uh, bird poop. 
you know, it looked like you have little spatters along. Um, what was happening there? Um, there's a couple of things. And my wire that could cause this is your wire speed could be too high, your heat could be too low, or you could have your torch held too far away. So if you, uh, there was parts here in the middle where I actually pulled my torch up to really exaggerate it, and that's what was really causing that spitting and sputtering. You'll also notice that the weld is sitting really proud, it's sitting on top of the, the, the uh, workpiece, and you know that's, uh, that's not good, obviously. We're not getting any penetration there. The weld's just sitting on top. Um, you know, if we were welding anything structural, that would most definitely fail. Uh, so you got to listen. If you hear that popping and carrying on, and you know you can feel it in the torch that's bouncing back and forth, uh, you need to stop and try and diagnose what's going on. You know, try playing with your settings. Is it that your heat's a little too low? Is it that your wire speed's far too high for the heat that you're set at? Or just maybe check yourself and make sure that you're holding your hands at a correct height and you're not pulling your hands up away from the workpiece too much. So that's uh, that's what causes that spitting and sputtering. So we're going to go the other way around now, and we're going to go um, if the uh, welder is set up so that it's uh, too slow. Um, so I got my spitting down here. I'm going to go the opposite way. I'm going to basically turn it kind of to the extreme. Now the Eastwood welders, one nice thing is, is that there's kind of some baseline settings in the machine that when you turn it to this kind of extreme, uh, extremely incorrect setting, the machine will kind of automatically dial it back down. So for for what we're doing for a few seconds of welding, it'll probably let me weld incorrectly, but it'll kind of adjust itself. So when you have your setting set all the way to the wrong way, it's going to for a split second do that, but then it's going to you know, it's going to re-correct itself and at least get it sort of close. Um, that's a pretty neat feature that uh, a lot of people miss. So we're going to go underneath it here. What you're going to listen for is there's going to be a gas sound. It's almost going to sound like you have a gas leak um, or your gas is leaking out. You hear a loud hissing and you want to watch this welding wire. Watch. If you can see, it's going to want to burn back into the torch. So, uh, let me know when you're ready, Joe, and I'll, uh, I'll start doing that. And, uh, and I don't know if you can see it's falling up before it even touches the piece. So, what was happening there, I hope you guys could see it, it was burning off um, and it was wanting to actually melt the wire up into the torch. I was kind of fighting that the whole time so it doesn't stick it to the torch. That's a, that's a surefire sign. If you're sticking your wire to the end of your uh, contact tip there, that's probably because you have your heat set too high for the wire speed that you have set up, or you may have your wire speed just far too low and that's what cause, is causing that to happen. If you hear that, that loud hissing like you heard, you can see the wire burning back, you definitely need to stop and make sure that you're, uh, that you're checking your settings. What also happened here is that if you're trying to weld two pieces of metal together, you're not putting enough wire filler material into the piece, so you're not going to be really filling that, that, um, that weld joint properly, and it's not going to be a very strong weld. So you want to make sure that you're, you know, you're doing that. So the other one that's common is a weld that has porosity to it. Um, I, it could be caused by a number of things. What I'm going to do here, we're going to get rid of our gas and show you, you know, what it looks like when that happens. So I'm going to shut my gas off and I'm just going to run it out so I don't hear any more uh, shielding gas. Okay, so now we're out of shielding gas. Um, cut our wire off here. So, what causes this? Um, this could be, just like I showed you, it could just be that you, you started welding, forgot to turn your bottle on, you know, forgot to crack your bottle open, you have no gas, that's going to cause that. Your bottle could be out of gas. You know, make sure you check your bottle. A good practice that you need to have to shut your bottle after you're done using the machine every time. I don't care how good your settings are, uh, I'm sorry, how good your fittings are, there's always a chance that you could have your bottle leak 
and you can waste a whole bottle of gas just by leaving it on overnight, um, you know, or for an extended period of time. So that's what could cause this. Another thing to check um, that could cause that is uh, if you have a, a hole or a cut in one of your lines, or I found, and earlier today when we were checking this machine out, we were getting set up for the video, this hose right here, as we mentioned, gas flows through this. If this hose isn't seated all the way into the machine, it'll let gas escape around the edge of the torch inside of the machine, and you're not going to get fielding gas. So everything will look okay, you know, as far as the bottle and your flow and everything like that, but your gas can be coming out the wrong spot. So what you want to do if you suspect that is, like I was doing earlier, hold the torch up to your ear. You should be able to hear gas flowing out of there. If you're not, open the side of this machine up and put your ear down there. And if you're hearing gas flowing out, then that wing nut may be loose that's inside the machine and the torch may have worked itself out a little bit. Or if someone was dragging the machine around by just the torch, it can work itself out and uh, can cause that same problem. So those are all the fixes for it. I'm going to show you what it looks like and what it sounds like. All right, and let me know when you're ready, Joe. Couple things to notice there: a lot more uh, sparks and um, you know, debris were flying off of that. And you're also going to see uh, this weld is just all—it's very porous. There's all kinds of little tiny pits in the in the in the weld. Um, you know, you can see it is—it's concave. Uh, each of these welds are just concave. It's, it's just—it's a really weak weld. Uh, there's all kinds of impurities in there, and that's what's happening with that porosity. So if you're seeing that, uh, there's definitely, it's more than likely there's a gas issue. The only other thing, if you catch all, if you check all of your shielding gas to make sure that everything's correct, you're getting swell out of your, um, out of your torch. Make sure that you have a good ground, and also make sure that your part's clean. Um, we didn't really cover that in the beginning because it's, um, you know, I was telling you about the machine. You need to make sure that your part that you're actually welding the metal, the base material. You want to make sure that that's clean. So we're welding a nice clean steel here, so I know that that's not the problem. But if you're welding on an old car, uh, that you're doing some rust repair, and maybe you're trying to weld to something that's a little rusty. I've done it before, you know, doing floor pans, and maybe that original metal still has a little bit of rust in it. That could be what's causing it. If you got rusty metal, or if you haven't cleaned the part and it's got grease or undercoating or anything like that on it, that could definitely cause that issue. So what you want to do is make sure that you're cleaning it down to, to bare metal as good as you can. Um, and then after you got it down to bare metal, whoops, wrong one here. You want to use the uh, Eastwood Free. Um, I like to use the low VOC formula. The low VOC formula does not have any chemicals in it. So when it, uh, if there's any residue on the workpiece, it's not going to create a gas um, that's going to come off of the piece that could possibly be harmful. One thing to mention that people often do not realize is if you use a heavy-duty cleaner, like a brake clean or a chassis clean, or uh, even our normal uh, pre-prep that's not the low VOC, they all are a little too aggressive. They have some chemicals in them that when they're, even though they're dried off, they leave a little bit of a residue on the workpiece. And when you weld, they actually puts off a gas that's, that's pretty toxic and it uh, could be very dangerous if you breathe it in too much. So make sure that you're using something that's uh, not nearly that aggressive. A uh, low VOC pre is a great one. Acetone is another great one. Or a simple, uh, simple green or a cleaner like that. Um, it's not going to have those chemicals in it. That's what you want to use to wipe the part off before you before you weld. That's always a, a best practice to do when you're uh, when you're welding on something. Now, um, make sure I didn't forget anything here on our little list. Um, so. Doing spot welds was another thing. I'm just going to show you real quick what a good spot weld should look like. Um, if you guys uh, want to check our YouTube channel, we're going to do a separate video just showing sheet metal. We're going to kind of uh, focus on sheet metal MIG welding and how to do stitch welding to patch the panels together 
or if you're doing uh, you know spot welds on, on putting putting two pieces of metal together. So let me show you the, uh, the spot weld on. Uh, I'm going to set the machine up here. So what I like to do when I'm setting up spot welds, ideally, I want my spot welds to be to get that factory looking spot weld as like on a car that's really flat. Um, a lot of that stuff's done with a resistance welding, with a resistance spot welder, where there's two, uh, two prongs, two tips that come together between the metal, and they zap together with the resistance is not like a filler wire. But if you want to try and recreate that the best, as you the best way you possibly can, um, what you can do is I like setting the machine pretty darn hot, uh, cranking it up pretty high, and uh, put my wire speed a little lower. What that's doing is... Um, a little lower than if I was welding a weld joint together. Um, what that's doing is I can get a real hot uh, weld and make it nice and flat. Um, if you have your wire speed too high, it's going to ball up on top of it and it's not really going to get the penetration or the look that you're going for. So I'm going to do one over here. Um, try and get a good spot weld. A couple good spot welds will do for you. And I'll change the machine and let you see what a, you know, an incorrectly set up uh, would look like. So let me know when you're ready, Joe. I'll do three. I'll do three in a row. So those ones there, they're not too bad. Um, let's see if I can pull the piece up to the camera so you can kind of see. Um, hopefully you guys can see. They're, they're pretty flat. They're not sticking up way above the workpiece here, above the metal. Um, they're laid out pretty flat. That's ideally what you're looking for, and that's why I turn the heat up a little higher so I can get it to flow out and get a nice flat spot weld. Um, so you can get the penetration you're looking for, and also you can get a nice, um, smooth, flat spot weld. So now that I figured you that, I'm going to crank the wire speed up. Um, actually, I'll turn the heat down a little bit. I'm going to show you uh, kind of a one that's not that's sitting a little taller. All right. So there, I had the wire speed set a little fast, where I had the, the heat a little cool. Um, actually, let me spin this around so you can see. So those ones in the front there, you can see how they're standing up pretty proud on the metal. Um, look like little speed bumps there. So those those aren't really sitting um, how you want them. You're also probably not getting the the uh, optimal penetration when you're doing that. Uh, so you want to, if you're seeing your, your spot welds are looking like that, try turning your heat up just a little bit. And it is a quick process. So if you're doing it on sheet metal, you are may need to be, it, it's just a fraction of a second. You want to hit that trigger. As soon as you see the welds pull out, you want to stop and let off. If you sit on the uh, trigger too long, you're going to blow holes in the piece, and that's going to cause an issue. Um, so that's the basics. I just have a couple, you know, tips and tricks that I wanted to show you guys. Um, just little things that I've come across that, that are that are helpful. Um, one thing here is uh, if you don't want the spatter that occurs in the MIG welding, or if you're working around something where maybe the stuff that's around your welding, the, the metal around that your welding is maybe pressed clean now that you don't want these little uh, pebbles that come off, um, flag if you will, that comes off of the weld when you're welding. Uh, what you can use is to um, anti spatter, water is anti spatter. This stuff's good, you spray it down on the metal, you can weld right through it. Um, and, you, and what it'll do is when those sparks and the little pieces that come off when you weld the most of the metal, they're just going to bounce off. They're not going to actually attach themselves to the, uh, to the metal around it. And that's going to save you having to grind off and maybe just a little bit of a little fragment of metal that pops off. So, uh, that's a good one to have in the can. Uh, you have your. Uh, 
thing, a cool feature with these flyers that I forgot to mention that a lot of people don't realize, a lot of these welding flyers, they have a knurled end on them or they're pointed like this. One good thing for that, let me cut this down here, is, I don't know if you guys can see in there, inside that torch we're getting all kinds of batter and this stuff. What you do is take the tip of this, stick it in here with it open a little bit, and kind of work it back into it. And work it back into it. That's going to knock out some of the stuff that's inside there. But the quick thing to do each time you're welding is kind of do that little so those are two little tips that I like to do to help uh, to help you out quite a quite a bit when you're uh, you know, when you're working to keep your stuff clean, keep your uh, you work work these sleeves and keep your machine clean. So that's all we got today for this uh, beginner's guide to MIG welding. If you guys have any ideas for any um, any technical videos like this, you'd like to learn setups or techniques or anything like that. Any products that you would uh, offer, feel free to comment in the comment section or drop us an email. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for uh, more technical videos and everything that is useful. And follow us on social media on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, make sure you give us a follow.